to Latvia now, where support for either Moscow or Kyiv in the Ukraine war has become a question of identity. For a sizable ethnic Russian population, that question is becoming politically important. The government's effort to integrate them with stricter laws on the use of Russian language and a ban on Russian media is stoking resentment. It's raising fears that Russia could use discontent as a way into the country. DW's Funny Fachar now reports from Latvia's biggest Russian-speaking population center. Entering this room takes you back in time to the era when Latvia was part of the Soviet Union ruled from Moscow. It all belongs to Oleg Vinogradov. He was born in Latvia, but is an ethnic Russian, like a quarter of the country. When Latvia voted to leave the Soviet Union in 1991, he says everyone seemed united. We all wanted independence, including me. When we voted in the referendum, we weren't divided, whether you were a citizen or not. It was the first, but also the last time we were united. Today, Latvia is firmly embedded in the West, a member of both the EU and NATO. But Vinogradov says liberal values have not extended to Russian speakers. On the one hand, freedom and democracy. On the other, they started this division. Step by step. First, they banned education in Russian. Everything had to be in Latvian. Then came the policy of division. There's no unity. Many here in Dagov Pils would agree. Most people only speak Russian in their day-to-day -day lives, and they vote for pro-Russian local politicians. Russia itself is just 120 kilometers away. Showing solidarity with Ukraine against Russia represents Western identity here. Some feel it's oppression from the government in Riga. If people here say that they aren't happy with the political regime and that they like the Russian president, then preventative and administrative measures take place. Not all ethnic Russians in Latvia support the Kremlin's policies. But decades-long tensions between ethnic Russians and Latvians have become more visible, especially in places like this. Since Russia invaded Ukraine, Latvia's government has been trying to crack down on pro-Russian sentiment. Expressing support for Russia's war is a crime. And a new immigration law now demands that Russians who do not have a Latvian passport must prove they speak basic Latvian if they want to stay. To curb the Kremlin's influence, Latvia has also pulled the plug on Russian state TV. It's discrimination. I want to watch what I want to watch. Why do I have to watch Latvian channels? For Russia's President Vladimir Putin, Latvia's anti-Russian policies fit his narrative about needing to protect ethnic Russians abroad. The narrative that took him into Ukraine. If they pursue this policy towards people who want to live in that country, work there, create some good for that country, and they treat them in a pig-like manner, then they themselves will face the same pig-like behavior within their country. Journalist Ina Plavoka runs an online newspaper in Dag of Pils. She says Putin's message for Latvia should be taken seriously. We have seen how Putin and his propagandists explain the invasion of Ukraine, that Russians are being discriminated, that they're being offended, that they're not allowed to speak the Russian language. Next, Putin might say that Russia should save Russians in Latvia. Please don't save us. I see the signals that we are in Putin's plans. And it scares me. These are serious things that should not be ignored. The Ukraine war shines a spotlight on ethnic Russians in Latvia and whether Putin might use them as a pretext for aggression, as he did in Ukraine. The government here has not yet found the way back to the unity Latvia experienced when it last made a big decision about its relationship with Moscow.
And let's get more on this story. We are joined by Fanny Fichar, who filed that report. She joins us from the Latvian capital, Riga. So, um, you know, from walking around, from speaking with people, Fanny, what are your impressions? Does, does voting for pro-Russian local politicians necessarily translate to support for the Russian president, Vladimir Putin? My impression is that, that it's not a homogeneous group, meaning not everyone who's ethnic Russian is going to necessarily support the Kremlin's policies. Also, there are no reliable statistics whatsoever just how many ethnic Russians here in Latvia support Vladimir Putin. Uh, there are various polls that actually suggest that about 22 to 27 percent 27 of them support Ukraine, which of course still leaves us with a lot of Putin supporters in this country, but also with a lot of people who are reluctant to answer this question. And this was exactly what my team and me experienced in Dog of Pills in this biggest hub for ethnic Russians in Latvia and the second biggest town here, the people were reluctant to share their opinion because they said off camera, well, if they have friends in Russia or maybe business or if they travel back and forth between Latvia and Russia, they don't want to be suspected of collaborating with Russia. So there's this unknown really just how many really are representing and sharing this narrative of Russia and are being fed this narrative by pro-Putin activists and pro-Putin bloggers, just how much they actually are believing that they somehow need to be saved being an ethnic, ethnic Russia uh, by Vladimir Putin at some point. So this is really unclear. And as I think that this is where the Latvian government now needs to find a way, walking a very thin line in Latvia, trying to crack down on pro-Russian sentiment, trying to crack down on people who disseminate false information, while at the same time making sure that they do not alienate people, ethnic Russians who've been living in this country all their lives, who are actually patriotic about Latvia, who feel that this is their home, that they are not being alienated because they just like ethnic Latvians enjoy the freedoms that this country has to offer since the end of the Soviet Union more than three decades ago. And funny, how concerned are ordinary civilians um, about you know, whether or not Putin might invade one of the Baltic states anytime soon, for example, Latvia, because I mean, if you if you hear from the top politicians, they have been raising those concerns for quite a while. It's quite interesting because when I was here in Latvia for the very first time last summer and talking to people on the streets here in Riga, in the capital, people were really pushing this question away, well, Latvia is not going to be attacked. And really, I didn't... It, experience this concern that I'm experiencing right now, people are actually raising the possibility, what if uh, Russia is really gaining an upper hand over there in Ukraine? What if then, if this war is going to expand even further and, and, and Russia may attack the Baltic countries? And these concerns that are articulated now much more among the ordinary citizens here in Latvia, as well as in other Baltic states here, is also echoed by certain decision-making by the politicians here. We have all heard that politicians from all Baltic states have announced that they want to set up a common defense line across their borders, making sure that they are proactive and don't wait for a, an attack by Russia, but that they're actually prepared. Fanny Fachar, thank you so much.